After a shaky entry into the pen tablet market with the Cintiq Companion series, Wacom is hoping that the third time's a charm with their latest fully-fledged Skylake Windows 10 drawing tablet. But with its questionable battery life and USB-C only philosophy, does it have what it takes to be the best drawing tablet in a market filled with much cheaper alternatives? I'm Nihongo Gamer, and this is the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro. To understand how important the Mobile Studio Pro actually is, you have to understand that this is kind of the successor to some really great but slightly flawed products and some really annoying branding issues. Wacom's Intuos drawing tablets have no screen and are the industry standard for pen input on a PC. They later became well known for their Cintiq pen displays, which do the same thing but you draw directly on the screen. They then decided to build pen displays with the PC built in themselves, but their first attempts at tablets had a bit of a false start. Unintuitive naming issues had everyone confused because even though it was called Cintiq Companion and it had a computer built inside, it wasn't able to connect to a computer separately, and so technically, it wasn't a Cintiq at all. They also made an Android version called the Cintiq Companion Hybrid, but it couldn't use PC software unless connected to an actual PC, rendering the whole thing a bit less mobile. In an attempt to alleviate the confusion, they introduced the Cintiq Companion 2, a full Windows PC tablet that could also function as a Cintiq when connected to a PC, but sadly it had an annoying high-pitched fan and a proprietary power cable that was prone to breaking quite easily. And that's where the Mobile Studio Pro comes in. In an attempt to make consumers forget how sketchy they are at building computers, Wacom has completely dropped the Cintiq Companion branding. With its library-friendly fans, it's now more mobile. With up-to-date processors, discrete graphics cards, and desktop software, it's an all-in-one studio. And unlike the jittery broken styluses being used by their competitors, the Wacom Pro Pen 2 is not just the pinnacle of pen stylus technology, but it delivers and even improves upon what pro users love and depend on every day, a supremely accurate, pressure-sensitive stylus with a hover cursor. On paper, the Mobile Studio Pro is everything you could hope for. You now have a choice of 13-inch or 16-inch screen size with QHD or 4K resolution, respectively. You have a choice of i5 or i7 Intel Skylake processor, anywhere from 4GB to 16GB of RAM, and solid-state drives with up to 512GB of storage space. If you decide to go for one of the two 16-inch models, both come with discrete graphics cards which can help in software that takes advantage of it like video editing or 3D modeling. And if you go for the top end 13 inch or 16 inch model, you also get a fingerprint scanner for security and a 3D rear facing camera that allows you to turn real life objects into 3D models. Wacom offers six variations in total, but currently there is no option to build a customized configuration. But that's not all, there's plenty of other exciting features like six express keys plus the touch ring. USB-C allows you to charge with any single one of these ports, so if one of them happens to break, you can still use the other two for charging. But this is my personal favorite here on the other side is the SD card slot. I use the SD card slot on a daily basis to get data from my camera over to my computer and other laptops that are shipping without SD card slots are seriously missing a really important feature that professionals need to use all the time. And as a bonus, you can use it as a way to increase the storage on your device. But tech specs mean nothing if the pen performance isn't up to scratch, and drawing on the Mobile Studio Pro is second to none. Without a doubt, it's the most versatile stylus I've ever used on a tablet before, and that includes Wacom's own Pro Pen 1. Mobile Studio Pro comes with what's now called the Pro Pen 2, and it takes the 2048 levels of pressure sensitivity and quadruples it to 8192. Is it noticeable? Well, I like to think that I had greater control on the lighter end of the pressure spectrum, but it really depends on whether your software recognizes the extra precision. The real improvements come from changes Wacom have made to lag, parallax, and accuracy on the screen edges. All pen tablets have some degree of lag, but Wacom has minimized it so well that in practice you'd have to have Jedi reflexes for the cursor to affect your drawing. And thanks to the much thinner glass screen, parallax is so impressive that it now feels like ink is literally flowing out of the pen's tip and onto the canvas. Although it never really bothered me before on previous Wacom devices, edge accuracy has finally reached a point where it's almost on par with devices 
devices like Apple Pencil or the Surface Pen. But wait a minute, if Apple and Microsoft are doing it so well, then why bother with Wacom technology at all? Well, the current Microsoft Surface tablets use stylus technology which is still laden with digital jitter that I personally find unacceptable, because drawing slowly and carefully is a part of my technique. And with the Apple Pencil, although easily the best performing stylus in terms of lag and parallax, it doesn't show you where the cursor is before you draw. That's not a problem for sketching and painting, maybe, but for the wide variety of uses that professionals use on a daily basis, the hover cursor is a time saver and for some, a crucial part of their editing or 3D modeling workflow. Bottom line, Wacom Pro Pen is now the only stylus on the market that doesn't have to compromise on accuracy or capability. So the stylus lives in harmony with the display, which is excellent, but it gets better because that display happens to be QHD resolution on the 13-inch model and a whopping 4K resolution on the 16-inch model. That's effectively a higher pixel density than the Retina display on my MacBook Pro. Don't know why pixel density matters? Put simply, you'll be able to see more detail in your work without zooming in, and that can filter directly into increased productivity. Everyone knows time is money, and I love time. If your color management requires it, the screen on the Mobile Studio Pro is capable of displaying up to 94% of the Adobe RGB color space on the 16-inch model and up to 96% on the 13-inch model. Just be careful with the settings because if you set them incorrectly like I did, you'll be painting images using colors that don't actually exist on most regular monitors. For photographers that want to edit using the wide color spectrum that their expensive cameras are capable of, this is the display to do it with. Now, if you're coming to walk from a device like Surface Pro or iPad Pro, you'll instantly notice that drawing on the Mobile Studio Pro feels different. The Wacom Pro Pen 2 has a retracting pen nib, so it feels more brush-like. Also, the screen is made with what Wacom calls etched glass. This means that the pen glides on the screen with greater traction and control than you might get with a purely glass screen, like that of the Surface Pro or the iPad not using a screen protector. Personally, I felt that Wacom's etched glass was the perfect balance of texture and image clarity, but as I carried around from studio to office to cafe almost every day, Day, the chances of some bozo dropping their keys on it is just so high that I've put a screen protector on it anyway. While the Apple Pencil certainly feels natural and has almost no learning curve, Pro Pen 2 does take a bit of getting used to because it's designed to emulate any number of different PC software tools. If the Pro Pen is like stroking canvas with a paintbrush, the Apple Pencil is like tapping on glass with a chopstick. While we're talking about the stylus, there's one feature that really can't be appreciated unless you try it out in person, and that's the absolutely superb initial activation force. Wacom has always done this well, and the Pro Pen 2 is no exception. If you have the pen tip graze the screen even only slightly, you're able to create the lightest line that your brush is set to draw. And if you use your tablet to do rough sketches, this can be a deal breaker on other tablets that aren't able to perform as highly as this one. In combination with the retract pen tip, you're able to brush the screen in a sweeping motion that doesn't interrupt the natural flow of your arm movement. Once you're used to it, you won't be able to go back. A good pen and display are only as good as the apps that you use them for, and of course, since Mobile Studio Pro runs Windows 10, you'll have access to any of the desktop software you're used to running on your normal studio setup. For 2D artists, I tested Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, Animate, and Clip Studio Paint. For 3D artists, I had a quick go on ZBrush, and for video editors, I even had a go with some 4K editing and exports. Starting with Photoshop, I noticed that performance was smooth and precise, but I wasn't able to test whether I was actually getting 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. With a 600 pixel brush, I was able to gradually adjust the brush size by pressing hard or softly on the pen tip, but my theory is that unlocking the potential of the Pro Pen 2 will depend on software updates. You'll be happy to hear that drawing a straight line is no problem on the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro. This is something that competing tablets with low scan rates tend to be unable to do without resulting in jagged edges. Adobe Illustrator felt amazing where it worked, but it has even more bugs, and until certain tools get updated, it's just a bit too glitchy, so if you need this app for your daily work, definitely check that the bugs have been fixed before you switch your machine for a Mobile Studio Pro. Adobe Animate, previously known as Adobe Flash, seemed to work with no issues for me. For the test, I only had time for a very rough animation, but if you need a tablet that can animate, I really feel that Windows is the only way to go right now. I've tested a few apps on iOS and Android, and none of them come 
even close to what Adobe Animate is capable of, so yeah. I would definitely get this computer if I were doing animation full-time. Clip Studio Paint, also known as Manga Studio, is where I spend most of my time as a 2D illustrator, and everything was flawless. I couldn't find a single bug, so I'm happy to report that if this is your daily driver for work, then you can jump straight in. I'm convinced that pressure sensitivity was improved for the very light strokes, which will make painters and light sketchers very pleased, and while the Cintiq 13 HD tablet felt a bit cramped to me, the improvements in screen thickness on the Mobile Studio Pro made me feel more than ever that 13 inch is actually plenty of space. Which is good news for me because unfortunately I can't fit the 16 inch model in any of my bags. Now for 3D artists I did test various features using ZBrush but nothing I could do really caused the tablet to slow down so unless you're planning on recreating La Sagrada Familia in 3D I think you'll find that the Mobile Studio Pro has plenty of processing grunt for 3D modeling. Now almost 90% of my life these days is video editing and so performance on something like Adobe Premiere Pro is crucial on a computer that I'm using every day. And with the Mobile Studio Pro, I was chopping up 4K video, watching it with no dropped frames, and exporting it in a reasonable amount of time too. It doesn't hold a candle to the export times I can get on Final Cut Pro on my Mac, but that's always going to be Mac only, so Premiere will have to do for now. In keeping with the theme of this channel, I of course loaded up a few games just to see how the i7 model would perform without the help of a discrete graphics card, and at HD resolution, I was able to run games like Assault Android Cactus on high settings, but Minecraft was a bit janky if I'm quite honest. I was impressed that it can game, but it's not a gaming laptop. So if that's what you want, there are better alternatives. Now that we've talked about the specifics, I'd like to give you a more general opinion of how this device worked on a daily basis. I've been testing it for a whole month now, and had really no issues that originate from the device itself. The form factor is perfect, it's not unreasonably heavy, it's a bit slippery but easy to hold, and my favourite feature of all? It never turned on by accident and drained the battery like my Surface Pro did. That's thanks to a sliding power switch which has to be pushed for a full second in order to wake the Mobile Studio Pro from sleep. The screen is bright, so I never once found a room that was too bright for the 250 nits of brightness the display is capable of, and in general I rarely pushed the brightness beyond 50%. You might not think so at first, but the Mozilla Studio Pro actually works quite well outside. This is one of the sunniest days we've had in weeks here in Japan, and I can see perfectly fine on the screen. It's not amazingly bright, but it is totally bright enough that you could actually see it, even on a super bright sunny day like this. I have got my iPad Pro here just for comparison's sake, and you can see that yes, the iPad is definitely brighter, but both are easily bright enough for working on outside. Pretty good. But here's one of the best features. This thing is quiet. When the device is idle, the fans are literally silent, but once you start adding layers to your drawing, you'll notice that the fans turn up to the equivalent of maybe an external hard drive. If you're exporting a video, of course the fans will drive a bit harder, but the good news is that the fan vents have been designed so that the pitch of the fan noise never really reached a level that bothered me or the people around me. And what's more, the fans are on the side of the unit, so even if you flip it upside down, the fans are never on an edge that faces your body or gets covered by your bed sheets. But it can't be perfect, can it? I mean, the only people who make reviews where nothing is wrong with a device are sponsored reviews, right? Well, of course, Mobile Studio Pro has its fair share of issues, and if you follow me on Twitter, you'll likely have heard most of them already. But just in case, let's go through the list. First of all, the screen is kind of warm. It's not bothersome or deal-breaking, but if you're used to drawing on an iPad Pro, which is always cool as a cucumber, it's kind of a reminder of the limitations of desktop-type processors, which just can't avoid getting warm. Then there's the speakers, which are just so tinny that I couldn't even bring myself to switch them back on to test for this review. They're that bad. If there's a holy grail of tablets, then this is probably it. If there's a holy grail of tablets, then this is probably it. 
But the truth is, if you're doing any professional work and you rely on laptop speakers for crucial audio monitoring, you are probably going to get fired soon anyway. Then there's the random stuff that will drive perfectionists crazy, like light bleeding. When the device awakens from sleep, you see a black screen with the Wacom logo, and this is the only place where you will see the LCD backlight, which hasn't been 100% sealed correctly. Annoying, but not life-threatening. And who can forget about bugs which Wacom's driver team seems to create just for the sake of continuity, like touch support which renders 50% of the display unresponsive, or worse, disabling pen or touch support completely with no choice but to force reboot the whole device. But worst of all, and this is a big one, is the unbelievably lackluster battery life. Laptops which last no more than three and a half hours are a relic from the 20th century, and I don't know what happens in 2016, but devices with awful batteries seems to be some kind of running joke. Anyway, the 13 inch is supposed to have six hours of battery life, but I never got more than three and a half to four hours, and well, that's quite pathetic if I'm quite honest. One of my personal issues with this device is actually the size of this power brick. Not only is it kind of large, but it's also just kind of inconvenient, unlike the Mac power cable where you can actually wrap it around the brick. And the only type of cable manage you get is this tiny little hook on the end, which I'm not really even sure what it's for. Maybe you wrap it around like this and then maybe clip it on. Another thing I'm not a big fan of is the actual part that you plug into the wall. Now I know the reason why they give this to you is because in every different country they have to have a different shaped plug, but it's just not very elegant and I know that other companies know how to do it better. I mean, what, what is what is this? Now for the issues that plague this tablet that have actually nothing to do with the device itself, like the fact that there are no replacement pen nibs available a full month after the release of the tablet. Same goes for the Wacom Link Box, which enables you to connect to a PC or Mac that isn't equipped with a USB-C port. Or how about the fact that not only is the stand not included in the box, but Wacom couldn't provide any official launch date for it either. For a device that costs up to $3,500, this really isn't the sort of attitude you want from a computer manufacturer. But it gets even worse. Wacom seems to love proving how much they hate us by selling things with completely inconsistent prices around the world. For example, upgrading from the i5 to the i7 model costs $200 in America, but about $500 for the exact same upgrade in Japan. But then again, lots of Japanese companies do this because Japanese consumers have a tendency to buy high-end model products without really questioning the value of the upgrade. But despite it all, the truth is is, apart from the deplorable battery life, the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro has uncompromising drawing performance. Now, whenever I draw something poorly, I know it is 100% my fault and not the device. If you feel that you're ready to take that kind of responsibility for your work, and you can see yourself taking that work to absolutely anywhere you want to go, then isn't it time you made your studio a mobile studio? Thanks for watching to the end of this review, and remember I have many other videos discussing the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro on my channel, so feel free to click on any of them now, and subscribe to the channel as I'll absolutely be uploading more drawing tutorials, speed painting, product reviews, and more. If you liked this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next Nihongo Gamer video.